My third year as a monk, we started the construction of the jetty, the inspired monument at Wat Damasadit. I must admit I wasn't looking forward to having all the construction. And a month or two after the construction had begun, an old monk who had been staying at the monastery for a couple of years announced that he was going to leave to find a quieter place. He didn't want to be around with, with all the noise and activity of the construction. And at first I sympathized with him. And then John Vuing said something that stopped me in my tracks. He said, well, I still have to work on my perfections. And I thought to myself, if he has to work on his perfections, what about me? So that changed my attitude. Fortunately, I didn't have to get too involved in the construction. But it was hard for not, there not to be a lot of activity. That infringed on my peace and quiet. And I ended up having to do a lot of jobs around the monastery that other people had taken care of before, but with the construction sucking all the labor out of the monastery, I had to pick up the slack. So I learned a lot. This is an important lesson that sometimes there are hardships that come, difficulties that come, restrictions that come when they're not wanted, but they're there. And so you have to learn how to take advantage of them. See, what good Dharma qualities can you develop in this circumstance? As John Fuhrman got sick toward the end of his life, I was his attendant, and again, it impinged a lot of my time to meditate. But as I learned to see it as an opportunity to develop the Dharma, to develop in the practice, rather than an imposition, that change in attitude actually helped me benefit from the experience. I learned a lot about patience, a lot about endurance, a lot about doing good things and not asking for immediate results. And so it's a good time to take stock now that we have these impositions and restrictions placed on us. Some people are extremely busy, other people have lots of time on their hands. And if you can look at where the opportunities are for developing the mind, developing the heart in the practice, given your situation, then they become an opportunity. We see a lot of opportunism around us. It's very disheartening. People who've had long-term political agendas are now advancing them. That's kind of sad to see this is what the human nature, human beings are like. But there's a different kind of opportunism, the Dharma opportunism, you might call it, where you look at each situation and ask yourself, what kind of Dharma can I develop here? It might be the Dharma of contentment, realizing that the situation may not be ideal, but it's good enough to practice. Many Thaijans were told by their lay students, I don't have time to practice, and their response was always the same, do you have time to breathe? Well, yes, okay, you can practice with the breath. They may not be able to give your full attention to the breath, but it is possible as you go through your activities. Stay with the breath energy in the body. Try to keep it as open and clear as possible. You only have a few spare moments, okay, go there. Don't go to the mind's incessant chatter. Try to create some break in the chatter. Tell yourself you have better things to do, things that are better for you right now.
in terms of material things. Okay, this is going to be lacking and that's going to be lacking. And it looks like it's going to be for quite a long time. So this is where we have to learn how to be frugal. Some things we need day to day in order to survive. This is why we have that reflection on, on the requisites. How much do we really need to survive? How much food, clothing, shelter do we need just to stay healthy enough to practice? Anything beyond that is a waste. And we may feel, feel the pinch further down the line. So think about the future a little bit. This doesn't mean that you have to starve yourself to the point where you're weak. Know what your body's needs are. Maintain them as best you can. But remember that anything beyond that is a waste. And it's a burden. When the Buddha taught, his aunt, the principles of what counts as dharma and what doesn't count as dharma, two of them are the fact that you are content and you're unburdensome. And the two go together. Contentment is the inner attitude. You don't let your mind get inflamed by the fact that you don't have this, you don't have that. Look around. Is it good enough to practice? Then every situation is good enough to practice. Now it may have some constrictions on what you can do and what kind of practice you're going to be doing. But just tell yourself, okay, this is the hand that karma has dealt me. So I might as well learn how to play it well. So that even though the situation may be not what you want, You can still find some way to see it as an opportunity. You may be forced to develop virtues that you had ignored before. You didn't feel that you had to practice before. Now suddenly you find that you really have to practice them. Well, it's a good sign that you've learned this. When things are easy, it's easy to coast through life and think that everything is okay. And certain weaknesses inside seem to not matter. So it's good to be brought up short to realize, oh yes, this is a weakness I've got. I'm not content. I am burdensome. I lack gratitude. If you find that these things are really true about you, okay, stop and take advantage. See this as an advantage of the situation. See this as an opportunity to compensate for your weaknesses, to build on your strengths. So the situation is not an imposition. It opens some new doors. And even though these may be virtues that you don't want to develop, they're still virtues. And it's a good lesson in learning how not to give in to your wants. So look around. Look for the opportunities. After all, if people can be opportunistic about wanting to do evil, why can't we be opportunistic about wanting to do good? To create goodness in ourselves and leave some goodness around the world, around us. Because that's one of the paradoxes. Is that was a reflection in Rantavala's teachings to the king. You know, the things you have now. The wealth you have now, can you take it with you when you die? Well, no. This is what was meant by the Dharma summary, that the world is swept away. It has nothing of its own. The king said, well, I have lots of wealth of my own. Well, Dr. Bala says, can you take it with you when you go? Well, no. But goodness, you take it with you by leaving some goodness behind. in your relationship with other people, in the way you deal with your mind. The inner and the outer goodness are connected, and the goodness you leave behind by being unburdensome, by being content, also goes with you as a strength in the mind. So it's not a matter of just taking care of ourselves and leaving the rest of the world behind. We look after ourselves by helping the world. We help the world by looking after ourselves. 
And right now, you, you may be forced into having to develop some virtues that are hard, but they're still virtues. And learn to see this as an opportunity, and that way you can make the most of it. <laughs>